Hi, I'm Doug, your tech support representative here at Atlantic British. In this video, we're going to touch base on what unfortunately becomes a pretty common item. As these discoveries are getting older, what's happening is we're running into head gaskets, slip sleeves, damaged cylinders due to burning coolant, a number of different things where you would end up requiring to replace the block before you'd be able to do a proper rebuild. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you essentially how to remove the engine out of a Discovery. This is a 2000. Essentially 99 to 2004 are all going to be pretty much the same other than with the 03 and 04. Some have the secondary air that's just a little bit more involved there. But what we have here is a 2000 Discovery. The heads are already off the engine. We made a determination we have a bad cylinder sleeve and we're going to have to rebuild or replace the block. So. We're going to show you basically what you're going to need to do if you want to change the engine over in your Discovery. So essentially we're going to start from underneath the vehicle. And there's a lot to unbolt when you get underneath. Main thing is going to be the, if you have four bolts that attach the transmission torque converter to the flex plate. We're going to access those from an opening that's just above the starter. We're also going to be taking this little bottom plate off so we have access so we can move the torque converter. This bottom panel that sits underneath the front pulley of the engine will take this out so we can put a ratchet and a socket on the lower crank pulley so we can turn the crank. That makes that easier. Starter wiring, knock sensor wiring. We've already removed the heads off this engine so we're already disconnected at the exhaust so the exhaust is floating free. You've got your two cooling lines that run for the transmission up front to the transmission cooler. We're going to unbolt some of that. There are some brackets on that that attach it to the engine. And then, of course, the uh, bottom bolts for the back of the oil pan and the two on each side above the, where the transmission bolts to the block. And then the, the other two will get at from up top. Also going to unbolt the, um, probably unbolt the mounts. You've got two nuts on the bottom here. Some of this, like the mount bolts, you'll want to start pre-soaking and penetrating oil before you get into the rest and give that a chance to work its way in. So there's a bit to do, but it's all got to be done, and it's not all that bad. It's just a little time-consuming, but it's nothing but nuts and bolts. All right, so first things first, we'll start with the heat shield that surrounds the starter, and then that'll give us access to the two uh, wires that attach to the front of the starter, the S-wire and the battery cable. And what holds that on, the back of it is a snap clip, but in the front, there's a little hidden bolt right up on the engine mount just over that plate and on the inside you're going to have to do it by feel it's a 10 millimeter head bolt and that's what attaches the front of the heat shield to the motor mount you need to remove that to get that heat shield out of there so we're going to sneak up in there with a ratchet short extension a 10 millimeter socket and take that bolt out so we've taken the bolt out of that shield on the round the starter as i said there's just a snap clip on there so we push outward and then come back a little bit now, like I said earlier, you have the battery disconnected, so you don't have to worry about shorting out or touching that wire. And this is going to just sneak right out the front. And we'll sneak it around the steering that comes right out. There's the snap clip I'm talking about, so you can see this just basically grabs right around the starter solenoid to take that out. All right, so our next step is going to be to disconnect the cables off of the starter. And you have one 13 millimeter nut for the battery cable. And then the little, what they call the S-wire, which is your wire which engages your solenoid, just simply plugs in. We can grab that with a pair of needle-nose pliers and pop that out. Once we clear that out of the way, then we've also got on the same harness the uh, wire for the knock sensor, which we're going to disconnect there. And then, then we can just take this part of the harness and swing that right up out of the way. And then we're going to look at the couple different ways we can get at the four bolts that bolt the torque converter to the flex plate. All right, so there's an access to those four bolts that hold the torque converter. There's a rubber plug on the passenger side right above or right here underneath the starter and just above the oil pan, part of the back of the oil pan. You pull that rubber plug and you'll be able to get a direct shot at the bolts. Now, there is a recess in the oil pan, so I usually find the best way to get at it is to use a long extension, about uh, 11 inch with a 13 millimeter socket and a ratchet and then just get in there and turn it um, to break it loose. Now to get each one to spin this, I find the easiest way, you take a 15, 16 socket and a rat long ratchet and you get on the front pulley bolt and then you can just turn the engine, you can turn it in either direction. And if you have a little folding mirror, that makes it even easier because then you can actually see up in there to be determine where the bolt is. So a bit of a pain, but 
that's the way it's designed and that's the best way to deal with it the only other way would be to make it any easier would be maybe to drop the front drive shaft to get that out of the way so you can get your hand up in there or even just drop the oil pan which you're going to have to drain the oil anyway before you pull the motor out so there's there's alternative ways of going about it so we're going to take those four bolts out and then we'll go to our next step which will be accessing and getting to the bottom bolts locking the uh, block to the transmission all right just quickly so we got the four bolts out this is what they're going to look like there's uh four all the way around 13 millimeter head like i said they're not all that easy to get at but you can get at them uh, so the next step is now we're going to be unbolting the back of the block from the transmission we'll do the lowers first and then we've also got to disconnect the transmission coil lines because they are held by brackets that bolt up to the oil pan we'll get that out of the way uh, and at that point we'll actually be pretty close to uh, ready to take this out the last step will be taking the nuts running the nuts out of the bottom of the motor mounts and then we'll set this down and we'll start disconnecting from up top so we'll start with the transmission coil lines because the brackets that uh, lock them in place there's one area where the coil lines are right in front of two of the bolts that we need to take out for the transmission to block so you have a clamp here and then another one up front that's got 10 millimeter nuts we're going to take those out and then that'll allow these to float around nice and loose and get them out of the way we're going to leave them in place we're not going to disconnect them from the cooler we're not going to disconnect them from the transmission this way you don't lose any fluid you won't have to worry about doing that after you do your reassembly all right so now we've removed and disconnected the three clamps on the transmission coolant line so they're a little more flexible now we get some movement so this way we can move these out of the way push them out of the way when we get to there are uh, two bolts facing the front of the engine on the back of the oil pan and two on this side we need to take those out and then you have two on the bottom and then one on this side and one on this side and the rest we'll be able to do from the top we'll show you a little trick on how to get to that so for now we're going to take those bolts out and then we're also going to remove the nuts that face down on the motor mounts once we've done that we're pretty much free and clear underneath and then we can get back up on top and get the rest of the bolts out and get this engine out all right so now before we throw these bolts in the trays what we're going to do is I want you to show you, take note, you got different length bolts that come out of each location. You got these four bolts are what's going to come out of the back of the oil pan into the transmission. These are the two that are up higher at about 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock. And then these two are the ones that run through the bottom of the pan into the, uh, actually the bottom of the transmission bell housing and into the pan. So just take note of the length so that when you go to put it back together, you put the right bolt in the right hole. So we're going to throw those in one of our trays. And we'll put that aside and now we'll get to the two nuts for the motor mounts all right so now that we've got the uh, transfer the uh, transmission to block bolts out on the bottom we're going to take the two nuts out of the motor mounts you have an 18 millimeter nut one here facing straight down and another on the other side pointing straight down so you can get at these with a long extension and a good size ratchet a breaker bar or an impact gun once you zip those out we actually have a little hidden bolt right up here which holds this uh, knock sensor harness up against the block instead of being a plastic clip it's actually a, a bolted on so we're going to get a half inch socket on that and zip that out and that should pretty much clear us from underneath um, after this um, pretty much clear sailing we do need to drain the oil and remove the oil filter before we put it up uh, before we put it down on the ground so that's pretty much uh, that's pretty much it from underneath. So let's get that done, and we can set this vehicle down on the ground. So now we've got this set down, and we're ready to finish off the top end disconnect so that we can pull this motor out. So what we're going to do at this point is we have the lower the upper coolant hose right here that runs from the thermostat over to the water pump, and then over to the heater hose. We're going to remove that so we can move that out of the way. You have an electrical connector right here for the oil pressure sensor. And then there's another underneath for the camshaft sensor. There's a plastic connector in there with a squeeze tab on it. And you squeeze that down, we'll disconnect that. By doing that, this harness here will be fully disconnected and we can swing that up and out of the way and get that out. At that point, we should be able to easier, easily get at uh, the oil uh, engine oil cooler which some vehicles are equipped with some are not and you'll be able to tell this is one of the lines right here for the engine oil cooler and there's another that comes in up below 
Um, a 7 8 open end wrench will crack that loose and we'll take those out. We've already drained the oil and we've removed the filter. So when we take that line off, we're going to drip a little bit of oil, but not too bad. So maybe you want to put a rag or some speedy dry or something underneath just to catch that a little bit. So let's get this apart so we can uh, get the engine hooked up and get it out of here. All right, so before I pull the hose off, well, just a few things. The clamps that are going to hold that hose on are nothing more than just a squeeze type. So you're going to grab your trusty pair of water pump pliers, squeeze down on them, and lift them up. Now, what will happen is these have probably been attached for quite some time. They're not going to come off easy initially. You just take the water pumps, set it up for about the right size of the hose. And if you grab around the end of the hose and twist back and forth, all of a sudden they're just going to crack loose and then you grab just to the outside of the pipe so as you squeeze it rolls the hose off now before I pull this off there's going to be some residual coolant in there probably sitting in the pump so I'll throw a pan or catch pan or something underneath so that's going to catch that so then we'll just roll that out and so we'll do this and this the same way this hose will be out of the way all right so here's your two connectors removed this is the one for the oil pressure switch there's a little metal spring on the top you're going to depress that and then this will pull right off. This one is a little more difficult because it's in an area you really can't see, but this is the tab I was talking about. It runs across the back. You can just reach in underneath with your fingers and just give that a really good squeeze. Sometimes it helps to push it into the connector, squeeze it, and you'll actually, in most cases, you might even feel or hear a little click, and then you'll pull that right out. So now we can get that harness up out of the way, and that opens up your view now to the two lines for the oil cooler. You have one right here, and there'll be a 7 8 open end wrench. You'll crack that loose. And then the other one underneath, again, it's just it's a no C, but you can feel it. You'll feel the pipe run up. And there's a nut the same size as this one right up underneath. We're going to be able to sneak a wrench in and probably have to tap it with a hammer just to get enough leverage to be able to swing that wrench. And this is the transmission coil line. You can just push this down out of the way. It's flexible now because we've unbolted it from underneath. And uh, once we get those two out, then what we're going to do is we'll get the engine crane hooked up. And the trick to getting the back bolts, or at least getting better access to them, has been that with the lift, we're going to pick the engine up. We're going to unbolt these brackets on both sides, take the motor mounts out completely, lower the engine back down, and it will now lower three to four inches lower than it would be with the mounts, which exposes the top bolts in the back and makes it a lot easier to get at them. Once we've got those bolts out, this is ready to come out. All right, so we've got, we're at the point we're ready to start pulling the motor. We want four bolts up top that we've got to take out plus the motor mounts. But before we do, what we want to do is put some support under here under the bell housing of the transmission. As you can see, there's no mount. And so when we pull this engine, this is going to want to drop and it's going to want to drop down. This is an aluminum housing, so we don't want to bang it on the cross member. We don't want to bang it against the drive shaft. We'd kind of like to hold it about where it is so that when we go to put the new engine in that we're able to line up the bolt holes a little easier. So what I'm going to do is just simply use a regular post strap. These nylon straps are very strong. And what I can do is I'm going to sneak in over the frame, come over the catalytic converters to under the bell housing, back up to the other side, and then come down to the frame and then we have these convenient pull hooks that are on the Discovery 2's that they used on when they shipped them over from Europe that they could lock them down in place in the container so these come in very handy right now so that's all we're going to do right now is we're going to run this up route it up and over under the bell housing back up and over the frame and we've got enough room between the frame and the and the body to sneak this through All right, so in this case, because of this strap, the, uh, the turnbuckle or lock buckle right here was going to go up over the frame. So you can also hook on the radius arm. Did the same thing basically over the frame, under the bell housing, back over the frame and hooked up there. Get a little bit more slack than I'd like, so we can just take a little wooden block and throw that in there. That's not going to go anywhere. And so now we're basically ready underneath. We drop this back down and we're going to raise the motor enough to take the motor mounts out then lower the engine which will actually be now lower than it would be sitting on the motor mounts so you get better access to the four bolts on the top once those are out this engine is out all right and last but not least before we get into doing this though we realize we got to take the hood off because we're going to need clearance we're going to have to come up quite high 
you really don't want to put this the hood will fold back but it'll only go so far before it starts digging into the plastic cowl and possibly bending the back corners of the hood so relatively easy to take off one thing you definitely don't want to forget is to disconnect the washer hose pull off this nipple right here and then we have four 13 millimeter head bolts we'll take those out and it actually will stay in place even with the bolts out while it's on the prop rod and then it's just a matter we'll take the prop rod we'll slide it down a little bit uh, before you do call your neighbor or friend because this is definitely a much easier job for two people uh, once you've got this out of the way then we'll get to work taking those top bolts out of the engine had body work. It hooks on backwards. That's how you can always tell too. Mm. See, yeah, this is just a bit too wide for me. So we'll get somebody to give me a hand. So you see now we have the hood off and the hood's very easy to take off like we showed and it's very light. It's an aluminum hood. So now we have that out of the way and now this opens up the entire area to make this much easier. You'll also notice what I have hooked up to the top is what they call a load leveler for a pull tool. You can rent them, you can buy them, they're not that expensive, and they just make the job so much easier. Essentially what happens is you'll be hooking this to the engine hoist and you can turn this handle to change the position of this center bracket and then that will actually change the tilt of the engine so that as we come up and out, it'll make it much easier. And it also makes the installation 10 times easier. So it's something you wanna consider before you go pulling it out. So what we're going to do now then is we're going to unbolt the motor mounts where they bolt to the engine block. We've already got the two bottom pins done so we're going to hook this up, pull this up a couple inches, access these inside bolts. There's, two, there's actually three bolts that hold the mount to the block. Once that's out of the way, we lower it back down and we're going to be able to get to those back bolts. Alright, so now as you can see, with the motor mounts and the brackets removed and the engine load, we've got very good access to these four top bolts on the top of the bell housing. Now, we're going to, at this point, all we need to do to move out of the way is the O2 sensor connectors for the upstream. You'll see one here, and there's one on the other side. And they just slide over a metal tab that has a, an indent in it, and you'll see a little push button right there on the top of the connector. You're going to slide that or push that in towards the center of the connector to release it. That connector will come out and then you're going to basically grab the back side of it with a push tab to separate the two halves of the connector to get that out of the way. And then right here we have our crankshaft sensor connector and we're going to squeeze this top tab, pull that apart, that gets the wiring out of the way. So now we have good access because the one bolt on this side and the other side at the lowest points are holding the bracket that holds those O2 sensors in place so they're right in the way those connectors so we're going to remove those and then we're going to take those four bolts out you can use uh, if you have a flex head ratchet and a socket will work good they're going to be half inch heads um, I prefer using I use a box socket uh, wrench which basically has a flexible socket on one end and an open end on the other and that seems to work pretty well or even an offset wrench um, they're going to be a little tight initially, but once you break them loose, they usually spin out fairly easy. So we're going to go ahead, pull these apart, take those four bolts out, and then we'll be ready to pull this motor out. All right, so I'm going to show you a neat little trick. Being that the bolts on this are half inch, and so we have a half inch wrench. We got a box socket down on that lower bolt. We really don't have a lot of leverage. So if you take a 3 8 breaker bar and put a 3 8 to half inch adapter on it, course that adapter is going to fit right on the wrench and now you've got leverage to break this bolt so we got the four bolts out of the back we showed you how to take them out and at this point, the engine was ready to come out. Literally, all we did was put a little tension on the chain, grab the front train back and forth, and the engine just come right off the transmission. In most cases, that's how I've had them come off. Once in a while, you're going to get one that's going to be a little tight. You can take a long straight blade screwdriver and get in between the transmission. There's, and the engine, there's a couple areas that are raised areas that are just for that purpose. Um, 
sometimes they just need a little gentle persuasion, but for the most part, they actually come right off. So now we've got this away from the transmission, we've centered up. You're going to check underneath. You've got a couple cooling lines or whatnot that may grab a hold of something under the bottom. So you just want to come up a couple inches at a time, check your lines, check your hoses, a little couple inches at a time, and eventually we'll get it right up and out of there. Now we have the adjustable, adjustable um, uh, top piece so that we can change our angle as we come up and as we come down. If we want to get up high enough, by putting it at an angle like this, you sort of shorten the length of the block. Uh, the other thing, I'm going to just put on the exhaust, so now we can do this. Going back to that piece of cardboard that we put in front of the radiator, is also going to protect it in case this suddenly swings forward. This suddenly swings forward and touches the radiator and we're not going to punch a hole in it. Raise it a little bit, check it out. Again, I think we can square this off. Put the rear up a little bit. A snug fit but it does come out you might want to try to hold it square so we don't catch the wiring harness in the back as we come up now remember too as your arm comes up it shortens the distance so that this engine is actually going to move forward a little bit as you're coming up. So take that into account. We just want to hold it back just a little bit. And we're going to have to go up quite a ways because we still have the oil pan underneath there. comes in real handy. We can pick up the back end a little bit and clear the oil pan. And there we go, she's out. Now it's just a matter of getting things prepped on the new engine that's gonna go in, and we'll reverse the process. All right, so we have the engine sitting here, and then what we have to do now is we have ancillary parts that gotta come off this engine that are gonna go on the new one, because they don't come with the new short block, and you're looking at flywheel assembly, your starter, front cover, front pulleys, and then we still have the crankshaft position sensor, and in some engine uh, designs, uh, your replacement's not going to come with an oil pan either, so we're going to remove the oil pan. And that basically has stripped the block down to its bare essentials. You know, you would be getting new lifters and some other pieces on there, but for the most part, we're going to need the majority of the loose outside parts on this to transfer over. So first we're going to start with the flywheel, or actually flex plate, and 
uh, torque wheel because this is for automatic transmission. This is the flex plate that bolts to the torque converter. There's your gear sets right there for your starter, starter on the other side, and of course front cover and oil pan. So let's start at the back and we'll work our way forward. Alright, so starter first. You have two bolts on the starter, one top, one bottom, eight millimeter hex drive. And I'll run that in there. And we'll zip those two bolts out. hardware we're going to need those bolts to put it back in. So now we're going to take flex plate and torque wheel off. Now something you want to do when you take this flex plate off, these are notorious for hairline cracking where the bolts go. So you want to give it a really good inspection to make sure no cracks, no stress fractures, nothing on that. So we this one looks clean. We'll put that aside. Then we have our large spacer. And then the flex plate is basically held on by a hub, and we've got six bolts right here that have eight millimeter hex drive in them, and we're going to take those off. Now these are in these are in really tight. Plus, when they go install from the factory, they're also held in by Loctite. So I find sometimes even an impact gun isn't good enough to break them loose. Now you can either put a, like I said, a large screwdriver through here to kind of hold it in place. I have a tool that's been around for a long time and is used specifically for holding a flywheel or for turning so we're going to use that to hold it and I'm going to put a uh, breaker bar on this with a reducer adapter so that essentially we're going to reduce down from half inch drive to 3 eighths drive and the 8 millimeter and we're going to break these loose by hand and take them out Okay, so now we have that off. Make sure again, save the hardware, put it in a spot where you're not going to lose it. So what we're going to do now is the last item in the back is going to be crankshaft position sensor, which is on the left hand side of the engine. Alright, so the next thing we're going to take off is the crank position sensor. And we've got basically an insulating cover over the top of it. So we've got two bolts here that are seven millimeter. We're going to take those out, take the shield off, and then under that is two nuts on two long studs, and those are 8 millimeter. And once we take those off, the sensor is out. Alright, so we got the two nuts out, we've got the shield off, and then you have the spacers here that lock it in place again. Put them in a safe place, don't want to lose them, and then you just slide that crank sensor right off those studs. And don't worry about the rest of this, this will come on the new short block. So now at the front of the engine, we got water pump pulley, lower pulley, and front cover. So what we're going to do is zip off these three bolts, take that pulley off, 15 16 so that'll take the main crank pulley off, and then from there the damper just slides right off. Two things you want to look at when you get to that point. You want to look for heavy cracking and splitting. Essentially a vibration damper or this lower pulley is a center hub with a rubber ring and then the outside pulley. I've seen a number of these come apart, this rubber dries out and the whole outer, uh, outer area, the pulley area, can, will actually slide right off and can cause damage. So if you see any dry cracking or whatnot, I would suggest replace this. And then on the water pump, I would suggest if you're going to put a new engine in, and you're going to take the water pump out, replace the water pump. Put a new one in. You really don't want to take any chances on overheating or have the thing go a couple months down the road after putting a new motor in. So just a suggestion. So we're going to zip this off and get this out of the way so we can take the front cover off. Alright, so at this point now we're at the water pump and what you have is four bolts here, 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 and here are 7 16 or 11 millimeter and these go all the way through into the block. 
and then the shorter ones the 10 millimeter are the perimeter bolts and once we zip those out we can take the water pump right off and then from that point we're just going to take all the perimeter bolts off of the front cover and the front cover will come out as well So here's the water pump. Like I said, once we took the bolts out, it taps right off. You definitely want to replace the, at least do the gasket on this. Now right underneath it is your cam position sensor. We're going to zip this off. There's a uh, 10 millimeter bolt, and that's going to come right out. And then we're going to do our perimeter bolts on the front cover. All right, so two things to note. You'll notice that when you're taking the perimeter bolts out, the bolt that's in this position has a little bracket on it. You want to make sure you make note of that, so when you go to reassemble, the bracket ends up in the same place. That's the basically the hold down for the connector for the cam position sensor. So we want to make sure about that. Now, you've got the perimeter bolts, and there are also three nuts underneath. There are studs that come down through the front cover and go through the oil pan, and uh, you need to take those three nuts out as well. Now, the studs there are fairly long. So you can do this one of two ways. You can either take a little stud puller and pull those three studs out, in which case then you can just take the front cover and pull it right off. Or what we need to do now is we need to unbolt the oil pan so that we can get the oil pan down out of the way so that we can then pull the front cover. So we're going to take care of that oil pan right now. Now, what I'm going to do is, this is kind of a neat little trick, you got a little bit of a stub that sticks out of the back from the crankshaft so you really can't lay this right up on end without some kind of a spacer. And so what I do is use that pulley, set that right about there. And we got some coolant left in there. So now that we've got this leaned up, you can see you've got a row of bolts on both sides. Basically we've already got the back bolts out from when we pull the engine. You got a bracket right here that we want to make sure we note when we take that off. And then there you can see where your stud is. This one came out with the nut, but again, there's your there's your three studs. So we're going to zip these two perimeter lines of bolts out. That's going to move the oil pan. There'll be the oil pickup tube. We zip that out. And then from there, we can just take the front cover off. All right, so we've taken this line of bolts out. Now, just to note, you have two more down in these wells these are at the very back of the oil pan and up inside so a lot of people forget about those I've zipped those out so now we should have all the bolts out so we can tap off the we can tap off the oil pump I prefer to use a rubber mallet as opposed to a steel hammer obviously because it's aluminum you don't want to you really don't want to crack it so you just hit it to the side and you got a washer there save that you can see somebody RTV'd the heck out of this, which you really shouldn't do. And there's the pan and the pump. Now something I'll suggest too afterwards, once you get all this off, before you go to assemble it, you may get some engine degreaser or some clean up or take these to your local uh, machine shop and have them hot tank this. What it'll do is it'll clean off all the oil and grease get all the mung out of it. You really don't want to put a new short block in and have something like this in the bottom of it. So here we have the oil pickup tube. We've got a 13 millimeter nut here. We've got two 8 millimeter bolts here. That will take the oil pickup tube out. And then from there, we can then remove the... You can see this is stuck in there. And we can remove the uh, front cover. So something I'll also make note of. Here's, the, uh, here's your oil pickup tube removed. You have an O-ring here at the end, you definitely want to replace that before you put a new one back in. Always put a new O-ring in. And then take a note that you had a stud, a nut, and then the spacer that went on the back of that bracket. Then the bolt would run through and then bolt to the block and that put this in the proper position. So now you've got basically, you've got everything unbolted. And then we can just take a rubber mallet and if you hit up on this end it should break it right loose. Again, whoever, somebody's been into this engine before and obviously really likes RTV, which is sort of a no-no. Plus, they've got washers now between the oil pan and the block, which is also a no-no. And we'll lift the front cover right up and out. Now, I'm going to make a note. 
we've actually touched base on another video about these front covers but essentially what you have here you can take these six Phillips screws out or actually I think they're posi drives now these are Phillips and inspect your oil pump all right you have an inner gear and an outer gear the outer gear basically is the rides against or sits in this housing the front cover so you want to make sure there's no scratches deep marks or whatnot that can affect oil pressure any marks at oil uh, at all any scratching you want to replace the front cover and these oil oil pump bolts so just a note so that's pretty much it you stripped off what you need to strip off the rest is going to be on the new short block you put in and again would be a really good idea as far as the oil pan the front cover if you can get them cleaned off as well as possible it would also be a good idea to do the valve covers at the same time and just get those items cleaned up so not only will you eliminate the fact that you could have some dirt or contamination still inside of them when you put them on the new short block but also it'll make it a cleaner approach and make it much nicer when you sort, uh, put it back together and the engine itself will have a nicer appearance. So we're ready to start putting this together. We're going to start at the back and essentially show you how to reinstall the, the flywheel, the flex plate, and the starter. That basically is going to encompass the back and then of course your crankshaft position sensor. So we'll start with the flywheel. Now if you notice you have a pin sticking out of the back of the crank and that pin is going to go to your locating hole and you'll see this sort of toothed ridge all the way around. That's an indication that's got to go towards the block because that's where the pin from your crankshaft position sensor is going to ride. So I usually just take one bolt and we get that locating pin lined up and we can rack this back and forth until it drops in. And just to hold it in place. We just take one of the bolts and we're going to start. We're going to leave that half hanging out. Reason being is now we're going to put the other five in. We're going to put a little drop of thread lock on it. And then we're going to take that one back out, put the drop of thread lock in and put that in. All right, so we've got a little thread lock. You can pick this up in any automotive center. And we're just going to basically put just a little stripe right there. It doesn't take much, just need a little bit. We'll go in and we're going to do that to the remainder three bolts we're going to take this one back out actually even at this point we can do so now we got two bolts in there to keep the flywheel from dropping out and let's squeeze a little bit on there and put that back in all right so we're going to do the other three the same way and then we've gone to the book and referred to your torque specs and these six bolts get torqued down to 58 foot pounds all right so i've got a 3 8 drive torque wrench i got it set for 58 foot pounds this is a handy little tool, sort of old school. Not many guys have got them anymore. But this is basically for holding if it's a flywheel holding tool. And they are still available. So we're just going to go around. We're going to torque them all up to 58. And then we're going to go back around and just recheck them all. So you'll notice on the first torque, I do it in diagonally. I go across sort of in a star pattern. And then just to make sure that you've got them all, what you do is start at one point and then just recheck them all the way around in a circular motion. So you know when you've got all six and all, all of them are torqued to the right spec. Alright, so the next item we're going to put on is the flex plate. Now you can see, these are relatively thin. You see these markings on here, so you can see that these, this originally was bolted to, this side would have been to the transmission, and the one with the full circular pattern would fit what you've got here, so it would go on in this direction. It really doesn't matter, it fits the same both ways. This is the plate that connects the engine to the transmission. The full load of the engine basically goes through this plate to get to the transmission. So what happens is, on these, and I've seen it happen many times, they get a hairline crack in them, something, usually right in this area from the bolt hole out to the outside, and they give you a noise when they operate. So you want to make sure that you inspect it really good, put a good light on it, go over it, make sure you see no cracks in there whatsoever before you put this on. So we're going to set this in place. Uh, run the four bolts and do the same thing. It basically any of the flywheel bolts I always put a dab of uh, Loctite on there just to make sure and then these get torqued to 33 foot-pounds 
All right, so next what we're going to do is we're going to put the crank position sensor in. That's going to run right here. Now, this is a Bosch engine. On the gems, it'll be a little different, but the positioning is the same. And what we have then is essentially the sensor goes on, then there's a pair of spacer barrels, the nuts, and that locks the sensor in place. And then there's a heat shield cover that goes over the top of that with two long bolts. The nuts that hold the sensor in are 8 millimeter. The two bolts that hold the shield on are going to be 7 millimeter. So get your tools accordingly. All right, so just something I wanted to mention, I should have mentioned earlier. You had that groove cut in the back of the flywheel, as I mentioned, the, the crank sensor rides inside that groove. Well, there's a little pin off the front of the crank sensor. Now, I've seen in many cases where when the process of taking the old engine out and that we're reusing the old crank sensor, that sometimes that pin can get bent in the process. So you want to make sure that you look at that pin, it's nice and straight. And you can actually look down in the opening here between the back of the flywheel and the block and you can see the pin of the crank sensor sticking out and it should ride right in the middle of that groove. If that's the way it's set up, then you're perfect, you're fine. But you just want to double check that. Alright, so last thing we got to put on the back is your starter. And it is definitely a lot easier to do it now than after you drop the engine in place because this top bolt can be a bear. So they're essentially the same style bolt as what you had on the flywheel. 8mm, they're Allen head, one on top, one on the bottom. We're going to slide the starter in, start the two bolts, torque them down to 32 foot-pounds, and we'll be in. And that will basically be it, what we need to do with the back, and then we're going to show you how to put the front cover on in that area. Alright, so just a quick review. Crank sensor, crank sensor cover, flex plate, flywheel, starter. So now we got everything on in the back. And then what we're going to do next is front cover. Alright, so now we're into the front of the engine. And the first thing we're going to do is put the front cover on. Now the front cover includes your oil pump. And it's actually a fairly large component. And the reason we're replacing it on this is because we've checked it out. And we've looked at the old oil pump. There's a little bit of scoring. There's some wear. You certainly don't want to put an old oil pump that may not be able to bring oil pressure up to where it's supposed to be on a brand new engine. You want everything nice and tight. So we're going to put a new front cover on it. So the first thing I like to do, we're going to do two things to get this prepped. We're going to take some sealant that I call it, it's called high tack and we're going to spray some sealant on this surface right here where that front cover makes contact. And even before I do that, I'm going to pour some motor oil. I like to get the chain nice and wet before I put that in. This way, when I get to the point where I'm ready to start the engine, I know I've got a well lubricated chain. So, we'll just grab any oil, and it doesn't matter because it's mostly going to drip off. So the replacement gasket, you'll notice, has a black bead on one side and not on the other. And this is actually going to sit in this position. And you'll notice when I sprayed, I also sprayed around the coolant portals on both sides because we want to get a good seal there. And then what we'll do too now is we'll spray the back of the gasket. Then we're going to wait about five minutes so they get a little tacky. And this is going to do two things. One, it's going to help seal better. And two, it's going to hold the gasket in place when we put the front cover on. We don't have to worry about pinching the gasket or having it seat out of place when we go to install it. All right, so gasket's in place. You can see this does a really nice job holding it. It's got nice and tacky, and we'll just a little fingertip tap there. Now, if you don't like the, the red that shows up around the sealer, don't worry about that. After you put the cover on, you can shoot a little brake cleaner on there and whatnot. washes it right off, so you won't even see it. So everything's sitting in place. Now, when you put the front cover on, as I mentioned earlier, the oil pump is part of the front cover. If you wanted to get more information on this, we actually have another video that basically is an overlook of how this is put together. So, here's your oil pump drive, and you have a keyway on the crankshaft. And what we're going to do is, we want to kind of get an idea of what angle that pin is at. We kind of want to set this inner gear at about the same angle, and it'll just make the installation easier. And what we need to do really is to just line that up and slide it on. So once you push it in place, you'll notice now you have two locating dowels. There's pins here and here. So once you get this up in place, you're going to line those up and this will just set right in place. So now it's nice and square. So what we're going to do at this point is we're going to replace, install the lower bolts. And we're just going to set them in snug. Uh, you'll notice that some of these pass through into the block so it's recommended by Land Rover we're going to put a little black RTV on the threads 
just so that it seals all the holes because there's a couple in particular that pass actually go through into a water jacket in the block. We certainly don't want that leaking. So we'll take the bolts, we'll put the little sealer on there, we'll set them in place, and then we're going to torque them in. So we put a dab of black sealer, black RTV on any of each one of these, all right? You got the one long bolt here, and then the others are all the same length. And then just take note, you have a bracket right here on this particular bolt. This is the bracket that's going to support the connector for the cam position sensor, which is going to go right here. So you want to make sure you put that on. So factory, factory recommends torque specs of 16 foot-pounds. You start in the middle, and then we work our way around in a circular pattern. All right, so we're all torqued up on the bottom bolts because we're going to have actually two more right here and another here and then these also pass through into the block and then we've got the water pump bolts and we're going to do that in a few minutes but on the original front cover there's an adapter right here that does a 45 degree for the oil filter and we're going to have to take that off the other cover to install it here now it's nothing it's sealed with an o-ring so I just wanted to explain that and we're going to show you just these three bolts, you take that off and then we're just going to transfer it onto here. So this is the elbow that we're talking about and you got four bolts that hold it and I pulled the bolts out. They're usually on there pretty stiff so you have a little bit of a land that sticks out right here and over here so you can tap on that with a hammer because you will have to knock it off. So we've shown you the piece that's got to come off. Now in the old cover you're also going to find this adapter and this is what that elbow would seal on and it does nothing but just thread over the existing threaded shaft you're going to just run that up in there and it's good it's a one inch socket we'll put a deep socket on it we got to snug that in and now what will happen is when we put the elbow up it's going to seal around that o-ring so we put a little vaseline on there just to make the uh, easy the installation we'll tighten it up and then we'll put the elbow on all right, so water pump is going to go on next, and same thing we did with the front. We're going to basically look at the, let's look at the configuration. And looks like gasket goes on like so. So we're going to spray the green side. We're going to spray a little bit on that. We'll let it get tacky for about five minutes, and then we'll be able to put the water pump on. All right, so actually the book gives you a torque spec where it's the same as what we did on the front cover below. It's going to be 16 foot-pounds, and you have the three bolts, this one here here and here which have a, six, a 7 16 or 11 millimeter head on them and you're going to torque those to 16 foot pounds the rest of them they're 10 millimeter heads and they just go directly into the top and you can see they're open holes they don't go into any water jackets and those you're just going to grab a ratchet and socket and you're just going to snug them in all right so last two items last but not least we don't want to forget we definitely got to put the cam sensor back in and that essentially is going to now, you, before you put it in, make sure there's an O-ring that sits at the bottom. You want to make sure that's there, so that that goes there. And then, of course, there's our bracket. Now, what happens on a lot of these, the two little arms that act as guides to slide over this, you'll see in this case, coming apart, they broke. The little arm breaks. So you can tuck one side in, and we're just going to wrap a little wire tie around there and lock that in place. So just to show you what the finished product is, we've got a wire tie locking this in, your wire your hole that's in the cam sensor for the bolt the bolts gone through it the clamp in place so everything's all locked down nice and tight now we're just going to put the front pulley on and lock that down and we'll be all done basically with the front all right so same as with the oil pump did you have that keyway and it extends out through the oil pump so that it also locks onto the front pulley and you can see the front pulley has a cutaway for the key so we get them pretty close to about the same position we'll wiggle this on and then we'll just wiggle this till we feel it drop in we'll put our bolt on now if you have access to an air compressor and a half inch hammer air hammer I would suggest use that this bolt calls for a torque spec of 200 foot-pounds which is real hard to try to hold by hand if you can get somebody to run a tool around the flywheel to hold it in the back while you apply pressure on here or run it in with an impact because that may get you close to the 200 I've had great success over the years. I just run them in with a half inch impact. That usually tightens up to a little over 150 foot pounds and they never come off. So now at this point, we're ready to drop this in place. So we're going to set this up so that we can 
lower it in place, get it bolted up to the transmission. And then just as we did when we took it out, where we're going to attach it to the transmission and set it down lower than it normally would sit to gain access to these top four or five bolts. And then once those are in, we're pretty much bolted up up top. We can lift it, put the mounts on, settle it down. The engine actually at that point will be in place and ready for assembly. So at this stage of the game where, we are, where we're at is I got the vehicle set up on the lift. We've raised the lift up up a bit so that we have room for the legs for the, for the crane. Let the air out of the front tires. Got to get the nose down so we can work our way over without having to climb into it. So basically what we're going to do at this point is just simply jack it up, set it over the top, and drop it down. You notice the oil pan's not on. The reason for that is, is your sump is about five and a half to six inches deep, which is that much higher you're going to have to jack the engine to get up and over the radiator support. So leave the pan off. You can bolt it in. Once this is in the vehicle and on the mounts, it's still very easy to install a pan from underneath. So what we've also done is at this point I have a jack stand set up underneath the transmission with a wooden block on it to protect the pan. And we can raise and lower the lift a little bit to sort of raise and lower the transmission position so that we can easily get into those top bolts and bolt up the top on the, on the motor. Now the other thing I was going to suggest or that I always suggest is you want to set one of the bolt holes for the for the torque converter that on the flywheel at about a seven o'clock position and then do the same thing for the torque converter so this way the two bolts are relatively close to each other so once you get the engine in and locked in it doesn't take much just to move one or the other to get it lined up so you can put that first bolt in and then after that it's just spin it and bolt it up and we'll cover that as we go along so that's where we're at right now so if you're doing this on your garage on jack stands, then you can always do the height change on the transmission with a floor jack. Now as of right now, you know, we've got the strap underneath and that's basically just to keep the transmission from falling out from underneath. So to put a wooden block on the pad of the floor jack just to protect the pan of the transmission and slide it underneath and then you can raise and lower it that way. So here we go. Let's put this engine in. So you'll see something that you may notice the strap that I have on here essentially what has happened is a lot of these well the, the a lot of these cranes the bar will not come out far enough to actually get the motor to reach against the transmission so using this tool and raising the lower in the vehicle on the jack I could get the angle of the transmission and the engine lined up and then once we got the engine down in its proper height we basically put a ratchet strap on here and on this pipe that's basically as I pull the ratchet strap it's pulling the pipe forward pushing the engine back up into the transmission so we're able to get the right angle. So right now, we're in, we're all lined up. So we're gonna get the top four bolts in and then torque those up. And then we can lower this down and start getting things ready to put the mounts on it and get that in place. All right, so you see the engine in this position. We've got the four bolts in on the back. We've torqued them in. Now, like I said, you're not gonna get a torque wrench in there. You're just gonna have to set them in really tight because obviously they torque them up before they put the engine and transmission assembly in when they first built the vehicle. So now what we're going to do now is we're going to pick this all the way up so that we have enough room to attach the mounts on each side. We're going to show you that. And then from there we just set it down and that's going to essentially put the motor in place. And then from here we can lower the vehicle on the lift and actually start assembling the top end and bottom end of the engine. Alright, so we'll pick this all the way up. We want to watch to where the bell housing of the transmission just barely touches the, the bulkhead. And then what happens is when this raises, this shortens essentially the arm off the front of the vehicle. So the other beauty behind this tool is we can crank this in. And as we do that, it's also going to move the crane back a little bit from the vehicle so it's not up against the front fender. Alright, so we're all the way up in the air. Now I'll show you what we have to do with the mounts. So what we've got, now here's the driver's side. And you'll see this is a new mount. Of course, you know, when you first took the engine out, you're going to inspect the mounts. If you see a major cracking or even a separation of the mount from the plate, then you know you got to replace it. So we put a new mount in, but use the original bracket. It's nothing more than an 18 millimeter nut with a stud. Just change the, take the nut off. That'll remove the original mount. Put the new one in, lock it down, and then tighten it good and tight. So essentially the mount sits like so down underneath. Now it's kind of awkward because you have one bolt on top and two on the bottom. And of course 
one of the lower bolts is sort of hidden behind the bracket. All right, so we're going to lower the mount down in there and just line up the top bolt. And we'll run that bolt in, not tight, but we're just going to run it in until it feels snug. And then back it off just a few turns so that we have a little slack so we can line up and install the two lower bolts. And we only need to get the lower bolts in by four or five threads. The rest we'll do from underneath. And then we can, when you come back up top to assemble the upper area, then we'll tighten the upper. It's all in sequence. So we got that in place. So just to show you what it looks like in place, this is the driver's side mount. And we're essentially just gonna do the same on the other side. Put the top bolt in, put the two bottom bolts in as far as we can by hand and then we'll set the engine down because obviously it can't go anywhere once it's done that and we can tighten up the bottom, bottom bolts properly from underneath. All right, so just a note, don't be afraid if the stud under the mount doesn't line right up with the one on the frame. Everything is built in tolerance and that's why they use rubber mounts. You'll notice the stud here. We've got slack on the chain, so the motor is just sitting there. The stud doesn't quite line up with the frame, but that's why they make flexible mounts. One tap and it's in. We'll do the same on the other side. We can disconnect the, the crane from this and then set this down. All right, so just so you get an idea, so here's how your passenger side mount should look. Now on this one, instead of being behind the hole, it's a little to the outside. Just nothing more than just take a little screwdriver and give her a little push and she drop right in. So now the engine's sitting nice and square on both mounts. We'll take the head bolts out and then we're going to put the vehicle up in the air and we'll start assembling underneath. Alright so from underneath the vehicle now you can see you got a lot better access to the two lower bolts on the mount. Same with on the other side. So at this point with a 15 millimeter wrench we're going to tighten those down good and tight and then we have the 18 millimeter nut and we're going to do the same thing. We've got to basically lock down the mounts. You can get up into these with a long extension and an 18 millimeter socket. We'll tighten those down good and tight and that will lock the motor down. Alright, so the other good reason for leaving the pan off when you put this in is to access the four bolts that lock the torque converter to the flex plate. As you can see, when we explained earlier, we want to get them fairly close in position. And of course they never line up. But you can move the torque converter very easily. You can slide a long screwdriver just under the flywheel and then just move that torque converter up so you can see the bolt holes. So there we are. We're all lined up and we can put the new bolts in. We'll put one in, leave that a little loose so that we can get the other three in easily and then we'll go back around and torque them up. Now to spin this, the easiest way I found, we've got the front pulley on so you're going to take a 15-16 socket and a ratchet Put it on the center front pulley bolt and then we can just turn the, the whole engine around to access the other two bolts. Uh, just a note when you get this up, you're going to see this open porthole right here with the two threaded bolts. The essentially Land Rover had reused the same casting from the old GEMS engines where the oil pickup would attach here and come down in the middle and would feed up through a galley that's up in the block. Well, when they went over to the Bosch system, they changed the design where your pickup tube now attaches all the way up here in the front cover. So don't worry about leaving that open because that galley becomes blocked off when you install the, the front cover. So don't worry about that. But in case you're wondering what that is or if anything needs to be attached there with the Bosch engines, you do not worry about that. Just leave it the way it is. All right, generally the procedure for doing the torque converter bolts, because we're going to put Loctite on this, but we don't want to put it on the first bolt, because we're going to leave that a little loose, and we don't want the stuff setting up with the bolt in that position. So essentially what you're going to do is, you're going to put the first bolt in, you're going to let it snug in, back it off about a turn or so, so it's loose. The, the next three, when you put those in, you're going to put a little dab of Loctite on those, like we showed earlier with the flex plate bolts and then run them in, take this one back out, put the dab on it, run it in, and then we're going to torque them up all the way around. So next step is going to be to add the four bolts at the middle of the bell housing. What I've done is I've started the bolt, just so you can see the location. One here, one up above, and then you're going to have two on the opposite side. Pretty tight to get at, and again they're a half inch head. What I've used to get at these has been like a very long 3 8 drive extension with a half inch deep swivel on the end and then a regular 8 inch 3 8 drive ratchet. And with that we can run those in and get them pretty good and tight. It's going to be really hard to actually torque them 
So all I can suggest is at that point, once you snug them in, just give it a good hard twist, lock them in, and you're done. On the bolt above, because they're right midsection, they're in a very tight spot, I found that the best way to get to those is a half inch shallow socket with a three inch extension and three eighths drive, and then a universal to your long extension and your three eighths drive ratchet. Yeah, they're kind of tough to get at, but you can do it. So our next step now is we're gonna put the oil pickup back in. And you'll look on the end of it and you'll see that there's an O-ring on the end. And in your gasket set will come with a replacement. Actually, it says right on the packet, O-ring strainer and pipe. We'll just take a small screwdriver. And usually these are still fairly flexible. And we'll just peel that right out of there. And what we'll do is we'll put the new one on. And I always keep a little tub of Vaseline or even a little motor oil will work. Whatever you happen to have around. We're going to lube it up just a little bit so that when we install the strainer it's not going to twist up the o-ring it's not going to create any leaks which could cause low oil pressure okay so there we're on and we always keep a little Vaseline around because we want a nice seal now if you remember when we took it out of here there was a stud up in the number three journal on the crank so you make sure you, you've pulled this out of your old engine before you send it off to wherever and because uh, you are going to need this because basically you have two different threads you have coarse thread goes up into the block and a fine thread for the nut and the spacer to hold this up in place and then of course your two small bolts in the front so what we will do is we're going to get underneath, we'll insert this up into the opening in the bottom of the front cover. We put the stud up in the block, put the spacer on, then nut and washer, and that'll hold it in place so you can put the two front bolts on and then torque everything up. Alright, so when we put the stud up, we want to make sure that stud is good and snug. Definitely don't want that backing out on there. Now I've used the stud puller, but whatever you got that'll grab that stud. And if you happen to use like something like a pair of pliers or a vice grip or whatever, you want to make sure you grab on the non-threaded area, you don't want to damage the threads. So we have that good and snug, and now we'll set the pickup tube up in place. All right, so this nut right here, if that holds the back support, you have the spacer and then the arm or the bracket on the pickup tube, your nut and your washer. It's a half inch wrench will fit that nut. You can either use a, an offset wrench or even a ratchet. Kind of hard, just you will just want to get it in there good and tight, somewhere around 13 to 15 foot pounds if you, you know, want to use a torque wrench. The fronts, these actually only take about eight foot pounds of torque, or you just snug them in with a quarter inch dry ratchet extension and a, and a uh, number eight uh, uh, socket. So this is essentially, it's in, it's tight. Now what we're gonna need to do is to get the oil pan up in there, we're gonna drop this drag link. We just disconnect one end and swing it down out of the way and we'll be able to run the oil pan up and in there. All right, so we've got basically the gasket surface for the oil pan wiped down. Now, before we put that in, we're going to take some right stuff or black RTV, and you're going to put a little bead right on these seams where the front cover meets the block. And then also in the back of the block where you have the main journal mates up against the block. There's also two similar seams there. So what we're going to do is wipe the area down, try to get as oil-free as possible just on the surface, run some black RTV on all four of those seams, and then we'll prep the pan while the RTV is setting up. So we're going to put the uh, gasket on the pan. Now first thing you're going to notice, this is actually, I love this option. The gasket is actually supplied with these little pins attached to them, which are going to go down through these locating holes, which is going to also help hold the pan in place so that when you set it up in there, you know you're going to have a good seal. And what we're going to do to add to that seal is we take some gasket sealer. This is in an in a aerosol style, which works out very nice. And we're just going to put a quick coat. 
across that. We'll give that a second to get tacky. And then we're just simply going to insert these down inside the locating holes and you see that there's actually even one here, one here. This is a locating dowel which will sit up in the block. And then uh, you're going to have three studs up front which are going to set down through these holes. So, it's a matter we'll just push it down through. Once we get the gasket on all the way around, then we'll just give the top surface a little shot of sealer as well. And all it does basically is makes a thin tacky surface, kind of fills all the small pores and whatnot that you might have missed cleaning up the surface. You want to try to get any gasket surface as clean as possible. Make sure all the pins are in and that this is lying flush. And then we'll give it one more coat. Now we had taken the engine out with the oil pan in, but we, it was much easier going in without it. So what we're going to have to do then is we're going to disconnect one end of the drag link and then swing that out of the way and that will give us a big enough opening and we can slide the pan right up in place. Set two bolts in there so it hangs and then we're going to put the rest of the bolts in and torque them up. Get this slid up in place. You're gonna need to pull those transmission coolant lines over to one side. And this is where the beauty of those little locating pins in the gasket come in because you gotta get a little bit rough with it. So we know the gasket's still in place. So up front we've got the three studs. You gotta line those up. And then having two of the bolts right on hand, put those right up in the middle. And remember they got a half inch head on them, so you want a half inch swivel socket, a long extension, and a three-eighths ratchet. So I do the middle ones because they're the easiest to get to. got to run it in about four or five threads. You want to do at least four or five because you certainly don't want the bolt coming loose and having that pan come down and hit you in the head. All right so they were essentially just laid up in place. So now we're just going to put all our bolts in. Don't forget the two that are up in the back, the two back holes. And once we lock those in then we'll put the back bolts on. All right so just to note as you torque all these bolts down is you just want to get them good and tight. You start in the middle of the pan and you're going to work your way out in a circular pattern until you get to the end bolts. The reason for that is it reduces the amount of distortion and the pan will seat better. Now that we've got the basically the perimeter bolts are on, now we still have those in the back. So you have the four that ran through the back of the pan into the transmission bell housing. You've got the two long ones that run in through here. Don't put those in yet because you need to get up inside and tighten those two back bolts that are hidden up in these wells. Then you'll put your long bolts on and lock them all down and that will complete hook up to the bell housing. Alright so one last but not least before we put the heads on makes it a little bit easier. What we're going to do is we've got to put the knock sensors back in and those sit basically right above the freeze plugs on both sides. Now these you got to make sure you torque and it's probably easier you can set them in from down below but it's easier to get the torque wrench from up above and you're going to torque these to 13 to 15 foot pounds and it's kind of critical on these if you over torque them you can distort them if you under torque them they can vibrate and actually cause a false false code so we'll get this started up here and then once we lower it down before we put the heads on we're going to put a torque wrench on these Alright, so this is what it should look like after install with the uh, connector pointing down. As I say, you can get it the uh, get at those nuts or for the torque wrench a lot easier from up top. Alright, so as you can see, you can get a torque wrench on these knock sensors. 
and you want to make sure you you uh, torque them to 15 to 17 foot pounds. Now it's important to torque on these. As I said earlier, if you under torque, they could create a, a false code. If you over torque, you could actually do damage to them, which again will also throw a code. So torque these sides up, and you're going to do to both sides, and that essentially is it for getting the block and your engine back into your discovery. Alright, so if you find you've had to replace the engine block in your Discovery 2, again, this is the Bosch design. Gems are similar. Um, just give a call to any of our knowledgeable salesmen at 1-800-533-2210. Or if you like, you can click and go to this link online and order your engine that way. Or if you like our how-to videos, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel and see more. So we thank you for watching and Rover on.